Uh, thank you once again for inviting me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's uh, in, in order to kind of to to use the word dream once again, just to be in line with with the previous panel. It's really a dream come true for 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 an entrepreneur as well as uh, for someone who's been working in agri food sector for a while to be part of such a great panel. So we basically have representatives of, of European Commission at the highest level and as well we have um, European parliamentarians and uh, Dan uh, sitting next to me as a representative of the government. Um, so going, going back uh, to why, why are we doing um, what, what we're doing basically. Uh, so if you think of what, what, what was the last thing you had for, for your breakfast and if you think of the provenance of the food that you've, you, you ate today it's, it's very, it's highly unlikely you are not aware of the provenance of, of, of what you just had. And the main, the main reason is that global supply chains, global food supply chains are growing in complexity. And it's, according to that, it's very, it's very hard to maintain efficient control over the entire supply chains. And according to the recent uh, 2017 uh, locked on food and beverage uh, research, Almost uh, around 32% 32, 32 of um, food executives, uh, executives in food operating companies are unable to vouch for the authenticity of, of, of ingredients that they're putting into the end products. And that's a, that's a, staggering, that's a staggering statistics. We're basically, seeing, we're basically seeing a Russian roulette in supply chains at a scale. And this is something that we have taken to our hearts. Uh, I was also born and raised on a farm and I kind of saw the discrepancy between what I was able to, to eat so I could see you know the, the food where it came from, the eggs, we have organic dairy, uh, we have organic farm so it's very very easy for me to establish what is the provenance of the breakfast I'm having. Uh, however when we moved away to the cities uh, me and my co-founders uh, Tomas and Branmir, we, we found out that it's very difficult to establish provenance of the food you're having uh, so we stick our heads together and we came out with, with a system that enabled producers, uh, mostly organic producers um, from short, shorter food supply chains, to effectively differentiate on the market by revealing the exact provenance of, of ingredients that they were using in, in, their, in their end products. And from 2011, uh, and back then we also stumbled upon a, a couple of gov government uh, suggestions, and. Uh, the government has put forward uh, a couple of regulations and one of the regulations that is uh, very very much efficient and it's very good for farmers is the regulation on green public, public procurement. Uh, now over the, the recent years um, the problems that we're seeing, uh, that, that we're seeing um, where primary producers have who, who are really producing high quality food is that they're still, they're, they still have problems differentiating on, on, the, on the market. Now, if we go to, to an example, uh, an, an agricultural co cooperative is paying 10% more for the, for, the, for the meat, for the organic meat, uh, uh, to, to farmers. And then they sell that meat to, for example, to, to a kindergarten. And at the same time, they stumble uh, to a competition that is selling, they're selling uh, meat um, with unsubstantiated claims that this meat is organic. And of course, uh, for a primary producer who is investing uh, much more into the production of organic livestock, it's very hard to compete in these uh, unfair market conditions. And uh, we are aware that the uh, European Commission um, is proposing another, another regulation on how to fight unfair uh, practices in supply chains, and we are, it's, it's very welcoming to see that. Uh, however, uh, we, we do not believe we can legislate our way to prosperity or fairness in the supply chain. We need to, we need to use basically the, the entire community. We need to use the, the community of entrepreneurs, of, of companies, and this is something that we've been effectively doing in the, in the last couple of years. So uh, going forward from, uh, from, from what was already said, um, we were able to use the technology of blockchain, which is enabling us to in Slovenia, if I focus to Slovenia, to trace 40% of uh, fermented dairy products on a daily basis. So if you go to a store, 40% uh, of the dairy products that you might buy in a store is already being traced by the system. And you can basically verify where a certain product is coming from for every, every particular batch. And that's, a, that's an, unpre an unpre unprecedented level of transparency. Then we move forward and we in involve kind of global community into what we're doing. 
and this global community has was was the was the main driver, the engine behind the decentralized system based on blockchain that we're building right now. Uh, we were able to uh, gather contributions from basically the, the, the whole world, uh, which which amounts to 22 million US dollars. And using using these funds, we are able now to tackle uh, global food supply chain issues uh, at a scale on, on a global on a global level. Um, now, what is what are the next challenges we, we see? We have we have lots of lots of energy at the industrial level. We have lots of energy uh, from from primary producers. But what we need to do now, we need to enable what Andre has already mentioned. We need to enable interoperability of data silos. Uh, across the supply chain. So this is something that we are working on and uh, perhaps um, since I'm sitting here next to, next to these fine gentlemen, um, I would like to ask them to kind of be ready to listen to suggestions to perhaps open up data sets and databases for these kind of systems. Because oftentimes it is not enough to audit supply chains, to audit manufacturers, to audit food operators. Sometimes even food auditors need auditing. If we look at the scandal of the beef scandal uh, from Brazil, it was actually food auditors that were corrupt and that enabled this, this uh, tainted meat to come to Europe. So what we are doing, we are doing cross-referencing of the data sets in order to determine who's it, who, who it is to blame if something goes wrong. So we are kind of aligning accountability with responsibility. And if something goes wrong, which it will, for certain, for, for sure, because, because supply chains are complex, uh, we will need less time to, do, to determine uh, who's the bad guy in the supply chain. Thank you.